Hi everybody, this is Phil, and I wanted to share with you a demo of a personal project that I've been working on called Phil C. Phil C is a memory safe version of C. Here's what I mean by that. In Phil C, every pointer carries a capability that knows the bounds and type of the object that that pointer points to. And every access through any pointer in Phil C is guaranteed to check that that access is within bounds of the capability and agrees with the capabilities type. Additionally, use after freeze are protected in Phil C using ISO heaps. The way ISO heaps work is that when you allocate new memory, you're guaranteed to get memory that already has the type that you're asking for at time of allocation and not any other type, which means that if you prematurely free an object and then later allocate over it with some other allocation, then at least the dangling pointer will still be pointing to the right type. What this means is that use after freeze offer no escape from Phil C's type system. Um, and the outcome of a use after free is either that your program traps or that it has a logic error that is not a memory safety violation. Now let me show you some of the things that Phil C is capable of. First, let me show you a simple hello world program. So this is no big deal, just prints hello. We're gonna run my modified version of Clang Whoops. And this just works because it's just a hello world program, no big deal. Now let's look at something more fancy. So here I'm gonna try to printf with the string format specifier, but what I'm passing it is actually an integer. So you're not supposed to be able to do that. So let's see what happens if we try to compile this program. So Clang is helpful enough to print a warning to tell us that we're not supposed to do this, but um, I'm running with uh, warnings not as errors, so Clang still generates code for this program and we're going to be able to run it. And here's what happens when we run it. As you can see, Phil C has thwarted our futile attempt to violate memory safety. And in fact, the violation is not in this weird.c file, but it's in the libc. Because Phil C offers no escape from its type system, that means that Phil C also does not offer a direct ABI to C. So if you want to call a function from C, from Phil C, such as printf, that function itself has to be compiled with Phil C. So what's happening here is that we're actually linking underneath the hood against a version of libc that has been compiled with Phil C itself. So let's look at where that violation is happening. The libc that I'm using is, uh, is muscle. And so let's go look at this file in muscle. You can see that on line 112 in this file, it's trying to pop a pointer from the variadic argument buffer. Um, but when it goes to try to pop that pointer, it gets an error because pointers are 32 bytes and this integer is, is smaller than 32 bytes. And so that results in a bounds violation. But what about something more interesting, like maybe, uh, maybe out of bounds access? <clears throat> so here we have a buffer that's got 100 integers, and we're going to loop over from 0 to 1,000, which is more than 100, um, storing integers into the buffer as we go. What happens when we compile this? Well, compiler is going to accept it because the compiler isn't statically reasoning about these things. It's all dynamic. And you can see that we have a bounds violation at line number eight in this file. Line number eight is this and column number 16, which corresponds to this equals. So when we go to try to store into this buffer um, out of bounds, we get this, uh, this bounds error and the program's execution halts. But what about type mismatches? Okay, let's say we have, again, that uh, array of 100 ints, and we're gonna point an int star star at it. So the int star star statically in C allows us to store and load int stars, but it's not pointing at memory that has pointers in this case. It's pointing at memory that has integers. So what happens when we try to run this program? Bad type.c. What do you know? Memory type error accessing pointer sidecar. So in Phil C, um, pointers are represented using an algorithm that I call sidecap. Um, pointers are 32 bytes and consist of a tuple of sidecar and capability. 
The sidecar and capability are each 16 byte atomic words um, that together encode uh, the full pointer and its capability. And the first thing we happen to try to access here is the sidecar component of the pointer. That is the first part of what came out of malloc that we try to star into that we try to store into star putter is the sidecar and that fails because we're storing into memory that has integers which is different from the type of sidecar so that program is not allowed to run but what about other things maybe i don't know uh, use after free or or actually before we look at use after free let's look at a type violation in the other direction so in this case, I have an array of 100 int stars, and I'm gonna point an int star at that memory, which is a subtle uh, type confusion because int star and int star, that seems like the same type, except that in this case, I've got an int star pointing at um, an array of int stars. Now the int star thinks that it's pointing at integers, but what it's actually pointing to is not integers, it's integer stars. Um, and so when we try to store 666 into this pointer, things are going to go wrong. Let me show you an example. So again, we've thwarted this futile attempt to violate memory safety. The error is that we cannot access these four bytes as an integer because this, that span contains non-integers. And Phil C knows that the type of the memory that we're pointing to is 100 side caps, 100 tuples of sidecar and capability. So that doesn't work. But what about use after free? Okay, um, here's a very simple example. Note that I'm only calling malloc in this case, which is not the default way of allocating in fill C. Malloc is still supported though. If you call malloc, you're getting primitive memory. So if you really do wanna allocate primitive memory, calling malloc is fine. But what's kind of not fine about this program is that we're freeing the buffer right after allocating it. Then we copy something into the buffer, then we print the buffer. Let's see what happens. So this program is, is, is allowed to, or sorry, wrong program, not hello. I want to be doing UAF, there we go. It's UAF.C, not hello.C. So this program prints hello just fine. The reason why it gets to print hello just fine is we haven't started any threads, and on this thread, we happen to not do any allocations that reuse that buffer. So even though we freed it, it still has the string hello in it, and we can still print it. But that's quite flaky. As soon as you start doing interesting things, you're going to get different outcomes. For example, here's a program that has a use after free with, a, with a, an outcome that is a logic error, but not a memory safety violation. What's happening here is after we free the buffer, we then go and allocate a bunch of memory and then free it that's of the same size and type. It's the same type because we're just calling malloc, and it's the same size because we're passing 100. So one of these buffers, at least one of them, is gonna to get to reuse the memory that we freed here. So let's see what happens. So this just works, and it works the same every time. Um, and the reason why is that it just so happens that when i is 16, that allocation ends up reusing this buffer, um, and it ends up printing 16 into it, and so that overwrites hello, and so then when we go to print the buff, even though buff had hello in it originally, by the time we go to print it, it has 16 instead. Okay, but what about types? Like what if you wanna allocate something that has uh, an interesting type? The way that you do that in fill C is using the zalloc call. So zalloc of char star comma one is sort of like if you had done the following in normal C. So this is how you would have allocated a char star object in memory in normal C. Um, if you tried to do that in fill C, you would be allocating something that points to integers, and so all of the rest of this program would trap. But since we called zalloc, it's gonna work out fine. And there, there's not even a logic error here. We're not freeing the object prematurely or anything like that. So this is just gonna work. Let me show you. So that's fine. Now let's modify it a little bit to actually create the UAF. Um, so here we're freeing this char star box immediately after we allocate it. But again, we're uh, kind of relying on the fact that nobody else has allocated anything of that type in the meantime, so we can keep using this pointer for, for a little bit. Um, so this will just work. Prince hello, no big deal. 
But what if you actually combine this with something that's allocating um, more objects? Um, and here I want to show you what will usually happen if you have a use after free bug, especially a use after free bug involving objects that have pointers in them. According to Phil C, this type, it star star, and this type, char star, are the same type. Because in Phil C, a pointer is just a pointer, an integer is just an integer. Pointers are not the same thing as integers, but um, Phil C at, doesn't care at the time that it checks and access to a pointer, what it is that that pointer transitively points to. It just cares that it's getting a pointer. So this allocation is gonna to get to reuse the memory that we freed here. However, because this is an int star star, so it's a, it's a pointer to a pointer and not just simply a pointer, um, when we actually try to access this, this star star putter um, down here, we're gonna end up getting not a char star, but something that is an int star star. That is, it's gonna be a pointer to int stars, not a pointer to chars. So when the printf tries to read the chars out of this thing, it's gonna die. Let me show you that happening. And voila. Note that we print got this far right here. So th this loop is fine. We can do this printf. But then once we do this printf, um, we get a memory safety violation again inside of muscle um, because it's trying to do a memchur somewhere inside of that printf implementation. And memchur it thinks it's accessing uh, just primitive memory. So it, it does a character access, i.e. it does one byte, an access that's a one byte int. But the span contains non-ints. In this case, the span in question, this thing is a single side cap. Um, and so that fails. <clears throat> All right. So that's a handful of programs that uh, illustrate Phil C's protections as well as some of its basic functionality. But what about real stuff? Well, it just so happens that uh, in addition to being able to port muscle to Phil C, I've also been able to port um, Zlib, OpenSSL, and curl. Uh, and, and one other thing that I'll tell you about after I'm done telling you about the curl. So let's look at curl running. So here I'm gonna run curl with HTTPS because I wanna exercise OpenSSL uh, to download a copy of the Phil C runtime file, which I have locally. Um, uh, and we're going to download it using a memory safe implementation of curl. Voila. And now let me just show you that this is the same file. You can see um, it's, 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 that, it's that file just downloaded from GitHub. But OK, curl, curl is fine. Uh, but curl is not the world's biggest program. So the, the thing that I'm really the most excited about, I think, right now is that I've also gotten OpenSSH to work. So this is OpenSSH compiled with Phil C, um, running on top of OpenSSL compiled with Phil C, on top of Muscle compiled with Phil C. So let's try to use that uh, memory safe OpenSSH. <clears throat> so here I'm gonna use it to log into uh, an Ubuntu instance that I uh, created in the cloud for myself just for this demo. And um, that, that server is not running memory safe code. It's just running a stock SSHD, whatever comes with Ubuntu, and all of the user land is just whatever comes with Ubuntu. So it's not memory safe, but I'm connecting to it with a memory safe open SSH client. Also, this is a great opportunity for me to give you the main caveat of Phil C, which is that it is still slower than normal C. Basically, since this is a spare time project that I only started recently, I'm so far just uh, doing the part where I get Phil C to run as much code as possible. I'm going to save the optimizations for when I have a large enough corpus that I can optimize with the confidence of having a very large test suite. Uh, right now, my test suite is just OpenSSH, curl, OpenSSL, muscle, and Zlib, which to me as a compiler engineer is just not a big enough corpus to do meaningful optimizations. But it's cool that I can run a bunch of stuff. So here, um, you can see I'm logged into Ubuntu, this Ubuntu server, um, 
and you can see that like terminal IO works fine. I've got colors and everything. I can launch Emacs and like edit stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm not even seeing significant keystroke delay and whatever keystroke delay I'm seeing is almost certainly caused by um, my uh, internet connection and not because of Phil C. So that's OpenSSH logging into something. So OpenSSH client, totally memory safe logging into something. But what about the server? Um, so let's see, uh, do I have it running already? No, um, you can see my LLDB instances because I was debugging it not too long ago. But other than that, it's not, um, it's not running right now. Um, so let's fire it up. Um, so to fire up SSHD, um, we have to give it a, a port uh, that's not 22 because I already have an SSH server running on this box, whatever came with, with Mac OS. Um, and SSHD demands that you run it with an absolute path and it's got to run as root. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> and you can see SSHD has forked. So now you can see that there's this SSHD process running. Um, and now let's try to connect to it. Um, so maybe first let's try to connect to it with just the normal SSH. This is memory unsafe SSH that just comes with my system and we're going to log into it. Um, again, Phil C is still uh, slower than C, um, but so it, it took like longer than what you would expect if you were just like running um, uh, a normal stock SSH. But you can see once I'm logged in, uh, it's all it's all fine. Uh, everything works, uh, and I can like do things on my computer SSH'd in uh, to myself. But what about um, what about the memory safe SSH logging into the memory safe SSHD? Well, here we go. Now this is going to be really slow because now you've got these two. Uh, memory safe processes with all this instrumentation and no compiler optimization, trying to run some kind of crypto negotiation with each other. Um, uh, and it's, it's just not gonna be particularly fast, but that's okay. Um, that'll just give me an opportunity to show you a little bit of, about how the compiler works. So the way that the compiler works is mainly about this Phil Pizzlinator pass. This is a pass that I wrote. Um, it's an LLVMIR to LLVMIR transformation that makes LLVMIR itself memory safe. So all the checks that I'm doing with types and pointers and all of that, it's happening at the LLVMIR level. And you can see that this pass is only 3000 lines of code. It's a simple one-to-many transformation with no optimizations. So it just literally transforms every single thing to do whatever checks need to happen. Um, no optimizations yet. One of the nice things about having a compiler pass like this is that I don't have to deal with miscompiles. So when I'm porting things like OpenSSL and OpenSSH, you know, there's some minor stuff that I run into, but I never have to debug a problem where the, the SSH is doing the wrong thing because my compiler compiled it wrong. Um, the reason why I don't have to worry about that is that the, the compiler pass here is just dead simple. Anywho, you can see that I've now logged in. Um, I can you know, use this just fine. There is like no keystroke delay whatsoever, even though it's all memory safe. Um, and I can do whatever I want in this shell and it works fine. So um, that's my demo. Um, memory safe SSHD, memory safe SSH, memory safe curl, running on memory safe open SSL, memory safe muscle and memory safe Zlib in Phil C. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.